discuss and debate uh, the behavior of a macro economy. What I'm going to introduce is called the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. It's based on a very basic understanding of supply and demand. If you take a macroeconomics course, they'll explain these curves, investigate them in a lot more depth. But what we're going to do is sort of a superficial overview and see how we use these concepts, these graphs, to argue about perhaps different points of view on how the economy operates and what economic policies are most suited to whatever situation you are facing. So the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. Okay, just a way of presenting stuff, not any one point of view. Uh, you can use it for several. Bear with me. What we're going to assume is a world in which we examine two variables, much as we do in regular microeconomics, except instead of just quantity and price, as in the market for pizza, we're looking at the macro economy, the market for everything. And so our quantity measurement down here is actually gross domestic product, real output. How much final goods and services is the economy producing? Think about that along this line. From zero, zero production, out to some point. So at some point out here, we would reach a maximum amount of GDP that the economy could produce, a maximum output level. And at that maximum output level, if you were on a production possibilities curve, you'd be on the curve, not inside of it. You would be fully employing all of your resources. And in particular, we think about labor. So at this maximum level of output, we would have employed all of our labor in the economy to the extent reasonable. Remember, we always have some natural un unemployment in an economy. So even at our, quote, fully employed economy, and we're going to call it this, this is QFE, full employment output, even at that level of output, there's going to be an unemployment rate of about, let's say, 5%. There's some controversy about that. It might be six, it might be seven, it might be four. Depends on who you talk to. to. But to make it easy, let's assume that at our full employment level, when we've got everybody working, we possibly can, that there's still some 5% of our workforce out there that's unemployed because of either structural or transitional unemployment. They're between jobs. They're displaced, at least temporarily, because their skills are no longer up to date. So this is our maximum level of output, what I'll call full employment output, along the quantity or GDP axis. And then along the vertical axis, we measure the price level or the rate of inflation. Okay? So that as you move further up this axis, you're looking at higher price levels or increasing rates of inflation. So the similarities between a microeconomic approach to supply and demand are similar. That's redundant. They're, uh, I think, obvious. What we're going to do here is we're going to, first of all, draw an aggregate demand curve. And we want to remember that this aggregate demand curve is really a measure of how much spending is going on in the economy. And spending is kind of the fundamental driving engine behind this explanation. And the spending that's going on in the economy, you will see in any macro course generally, is consumption spending by, businesses, uh, by consumers, investment spending, I, by businesses on new inventory, plant equipment. It would be also government spending, state, local, federal, regional. And it would be spending by the foreign sector, that is the sale, the net sale of exports overseas to your foreign trading partners. Total spending, aggregate demand, GDP. Those three terms are used pretty interchangeably here, okay? Now, the other assumption we make is that there is a supply curve of some shape. Uh, if we were to draw it here, let's say here's an aggregate supply curve, like a microeconomic supply curve, it indicates that as prices rise, sellers produce and offer for sale more product. And therefore, there's an equilibrium established in this macroeconomic market 
that corresponds to three things. Watch carefully, right? It corresponds to the current price level or inflation rate. It corresponds to the current level of output, how much GDP is the economy producing, how many billion, trillion dollars. And it corresponds also, we'll call it this, Q star, that's our equilibrium. And it also corresponds to some level of unemployment. But since you're operating below full employment, at some output level less than full employment, you've got more people unemployed. And so your unemployment rate down here might be, let's say, 8%. So down along this axis, as you produce less, you increase the unemployment rate. So that's how we're going to read the axes. That's how we're going to look at this point of equilibrium and see what it's telling us. And that's how we're going to say, well, if the aggregate demand curve moves, what effect will that have on the rate of inflation, on the level of output, and on the unemployment rate? Quick example, if aggregate demand increased here for whatever reason, if there was an increase in spending by one or more of those sectors, we have an increase in the aggregate demand curve, the way we've drawn things right now, it would move us to a new equilibrium up here, and what would be going on in the economy? In fact, the rate of inflation or the price level would be higher. The level of output would be greater. We would be producing more goods and services. And as a result, the unemployment rate would have fallen from 8% back down to maybe 6 or 7. See what I'm saying? So we can say if the demand moves. If we can find a way to move the demand curve, this is what we would achieve. We can also do this, and we will later, uh, what happens if the supply curve shifts. If the supply curve were to shift to the right, that would put downward pressure on prices. It would stimulate more output, and as a result of more output, lower unemployment. So we want to use this model to discuss shifts in aggregate supply and demand and their effect on the economy. And once we get that down, then we want to ask, what can we do? Where are we, and what can we do with aggregate supply or aggregate demand or both to have some hopefully positive effect on the economy? Okay, so this is then the, the basics between the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, the interaction of aggregate or total market demand and market supply, aggregate demand, aggregate supply for the economy. Once we understand these basics, we can get into alternative views of the economy and discussions and debates on policy. Thank you.